Well, Shabbat Shalom, everyone. God bless you. Welcome to the Saturday Shabbat meeting of the Holy Scriptures in Israel. We are occupied this morning with the Word of God in the book of Ecclesiastes. And we were just uh, uh, thinking and singing of uh, the Lord Jesus, the Lord Yeshua, who is Lord. And uh, He is the one who loved us and gave Himself for us. And how wonderful it is for us to be occupied with Him as we study uh, the Word of God uh, together. Let us just ask the Lord to bless this session. We are reading the, this Saturday, the Shabbat afternoon, at our Holy Scriptures in Israel a Shabbat meeting from the book of Ecclesiastes in chapter 2. So let's ask the Lord to bless us. Father, we just want to thank you for your word. Bless us as we are learning from the scripture. This uh, meeting today, we ask it in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus, our Lord and our Messiah. Amen. 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 Please turn with me to the book of Ecclesiastes. In Hebrew, the name of the book is Kohelet. And Kohelet uh, really is the man that we know him as King Shlomo. He is the Kohelet. He is the one who gathered the Kehilah, gathered the assembly in the history of Israel in days of old. He gathered them and he gave them this whole message that really reflect on the life that he have had. And he uh, desired to encourage Israel, of course, in days of old, you and I today, to remember our God, our Creator, already, beloved friend, in the day of our youth. And how important it is to adhere to Kohelet's counsel and uh, advice. And so we are in the second chapter, and I would like to read for this session only the first 11 verses of Ecclesiastes uh, chapter 2. And so Ecclesiastes, Kohelet, Shlomo, continue in speaking to the, to the nation of Israel, and he said, I said in my heart, go to now, I will prove thee with mirth. Therefore, enjoy pleasure. And behold, this also is vanity. I said of laughter, it is mad. And of mirth, what doeth it? I sought in mine heart to give myself unto wine, yet acquainting mine heart with wisdom, and to lay hold on folly till I might see what was that good for the sons of men, which they should do under the heaven all the days of their lives. I made me great works, I builded me houses, I planted me vineyard, I made me gardens and orchards, and I planted trees in them of all kind of fruits. I made me pools of water to water therewith the wood that bringeth forth trees, I got me servants and maidens, and had servants born in my house. Also, I had great possessions of great and small cattle, above all that were in Jerusalem before me. Verse 8, I gathered me silver and gold, and a, a peculiar treasure of kings and of uh, um, the provinces, I got me men singers <coughs> and women singers, and the delights of the sons of men as musical instruments and that of all sorts. I was great in, in an increase more than all that were before me in Jerusalem. Also, my wisdom remained with me. And whatsoever mine eyes desire, I kept not from them. 
I withheld not my heart from any joy, for my heart rejoices in all my labor. And this was my a portion of all my labor. Then I looked on all the works that my hands had wrought, and on the labors that I had labor to do, and behold, all was vanity and vexation of spirit, and there was no profit under the sun. <clears throat> And I will stop here with the reading, beloved brothers and sisters. As we are continuing together, beloved brothers and sisters, to study the book of Ecclesiastes, I want to remind you once again that that name, Ecclesiastes, comes from the word, the Hebrew word Kehila or Kohelet. And he called this man Shlomo, called himself by the very same name. You notice know chapter. 1 and verse 12, I, the preacher, was king over Israel in Jerusalem. In Hebrew, in chapter 1 and verse 12, Ani Kohelet, Haiti Melech al Yisrael <coughs> be Yerushalayim. In other words, Kohelet, Ecclesiastes, is none else but Solomon, the king of Israel himself. And so we are reminded, as we are studying together this interesting uh, uh, book that he wrote, we are learning from this very interesting uh, uh, book of Kohelet, that Kohelet is the one that wrote three books. You remember, we have already mentioned that. He was, he was born at about 991 BC. He became king at about 971 BC, that is King Shlomo. And then he reigned for about 40 years over all the people of Israel, according to 1 Kings chapter 11 and verse 42. Shlomo, Solomon, died at approximately the year between uh, when he was 52 to 60 years of age. In fact, many of us who may listen to the message today are much older than King Shlomo, and we are still here alive, living here in this world, and how thankful uh, we ought to be to God who have given us such a blessing to live here in this world for such a long time. But when God gave us this long time to live upon the face of this earth, he wants us to live this life in accordance to his will, not neglecting to remember God in our life. So Shlomo wrote various books. He wrote Song of Solomon, Shir Hashirim, at his early days of his life. He wrote Proverbs, that is Mishle, sometime in the middle part of his life. And apparently he wrote this book of Ecclesiastes, Kohelet, a little bit later in his life after he made many, many mistakes. And in a sense, it is kind of a book of confession before the Lord and before his people Israel, showing to them the lesson that he had learned as he lived here for a time, setting God aside, living under the sun, neglecting to have communion and fellowship with his God. And so, as we are learning here, beloved brothers and sisters, we learn of Solomon's wisdom in Ecclesiastes chapter 1 and verse 16. We learn of Solomon's buildings and activities in Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verses 4 to 6. We learn of Solomon's wealth in Ecclesiastes chapter 2 and verses 7 to 9. And we will also learn about his activities after writing this book in Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verses 9 and 10. And here, beloved brothers and sisters, in our chapter, in chapter 2 and verses 1 to 11, Solomon shares with Israel and with you and I uh, that the fact that he was seeking for the meaning in life. What is the purpose of life? Why do we have here, God placed us here in this world? What is the purpose in life for God's people. Of course, we are reminded that whenever 
any book was written in the word of God, it was written by the men of God for the people of God. The unregenerated world, the unbelieving world, first of all, must come to know the Savior, to know God, to have a personal relationship with God. And if you do not know yet the Lord Yeshua, Jesus the Messiah, as your Mashiach, Lord and Savior, we are encouraging you through this message to come to know the Messiah, the Savior, the Lord Jesus who gave his life for us when he came from heaven to provide redemption for anyone who will trust in him. But once we have trusted in him as believers, we are called to live here for God in this world. It was C.H. Lewis who said, the chief end of man is to glorify God and to enjoy him forever. That is the chief end of man, is to glorify God and to enjoy God forever. This is exactly what Shlomo is showing to us as he gave us this very interesting book of Ecclesiastes. So, what we learn here in the second chapter, there are main, mainly three points here in this second chapter. The first point is Kohelet, that is Solomon, in verses 1 to 11. He shared with Israel and with you and I his search for, the, for meaning in his own life. He's sharing his own personal search for meaning and purpose in his own life. Verses 1 to 11. Then later on in verses 12 uh, to verse 23, Kohelet, that is Solomon, reflect and he analyzing his own search for meaning in life. And finally, at the end of chapter 2, verses 24, 25, and 26, Kohelet, that is Shlomo, Solomon, he provide final conclusion to the results from his search to find out what is the meaning and the purpose in life. Now, obviously, we will not cover all at this uh, session today, beloved brothers and sisters, but we are going to go over the first 11 verses of uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 2. We read in the first 11 verses, Solomon's personal search for meaning in his own personal life. And brothers and sisters, just as we are reading these verses, I would like to kind of challenge all of us. Isn't it true? All of us want to know what God has for us in our own life. Now that we became believers, now that we have recognized that we are sinners by nature, and that God sent the Messiah, the Lord Jesus, his own son, to come to this world, to give his life for us. And after we have accepted Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah, we became sons and daughters of God the Father. And now we want to know what is the purpose and the meaning for us in our lives. What are we going to do? How are we going to live? Uh, uh, young people look for a partner, a married person to marry them and to have established a family. Uh, people who search for work, looking for a good job to find that they can uh, have a, a purpose here in life, they can uh, find an occupation. Uh, others are seeking uh, uh, all sort of direction in one's life. This is the, the natural desire of all, not only for believers, even for those who are yet without Christ, yet without the Messiah. What is the purpose that we have here in this world? Now, because sin came into this world and man fell into sin, it didn't take too long, and because of the fall of, of mankind, we all have gone astray. The scripture tells us, all we like sheep have gone astray, we have turned everyone to his own way. This is what happened to men, to people without God in their life. And Solomon now as a child of God, as a servant of God, as a believer that had everything that God had already given to him here in this world. 
He had experienced a time in his life that he turned away from God, and he sought to find pleasure, to find satisfaction in other things while setting God aside. And he had to learn very quickly that leaving God outside of, li- of our life, it just doesn't work. Because we were created, as we just mentioned, our chief, the chief end of man is to glorify God in our life and to enjoy Him forever. In fact, if you just go back with me to Psalm 16, and there we see the perfect man, the Lord Yeshua, Jesus the Messiah, as the prophetically and typically seen in the life of David, and how Yeshua, Jesus the Messiah, set God before him all the time. We read in Psalm 16, and notice that in verse uh, uh, verse 8, I have set the Lord always before me. David could not say it. David could say, I have set the Lord sometimes before me. That could never be applied to David because David sinned and failed. That's why this is a messianic psalm. I have said the Lord always before me, because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. What is the result of setting the Lord always before him? We read in verse 9, Therefore my heart is glad, and my glory rejoices. My flesh also shall rest in hope. And then notice what it says in verse 11, Thou will show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness and joy. And so the psalmist of Israel, it is David, prophetically speaking about his own life, but obviously he he became here a shadow and a picture of the Messiah who would come, Yeshua, Jesus, who has said God always before him. From the moment that he was born until the time that he died, <clears throat> he set God always before him, and therefore he rejoiced. He was a man of joy, even though he had experienced much sorrow here in this world. And so this is the thought that we have here in our portion here, that Shlomo is sharing with Israel the fact that he was searching, he had a personal search for meaning in life, of his own life. When he turned away from the Lord, he found out that everything is vanity and vexation of spirit. And so listen to these in verses 1 and 2. Kohelet chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. Shlomo, Kohelet, is summarized. He's giving us, first of all, the summary of his search for the meaning of life. Notice what he says in verse 1. I said to my heart. Notice that he's using here in this portion. Many times the word I, me, and mine. It, he, he's sharing his personal experience. And he's honestly telling Israel, telling you and I, that he personally was searching for meaning in his life. And he said, I said in my heart, go to now, I will prove thee with mirth. Therefore enjoy pleasure. And behold, this also is vanity. Verse 2, I said of laughter, it is mad and of mirth, what does it? What doeth it? In other words, Shlomo is sharing with Israel and with you and I. He says he's speaking to his own heart. You know, sometimes we are saying within ourselves, we are speaking to ourselves, and we are saying, what shall I do? How can I find pleasure and enjoy my life here upon the face of this earth? And naturally speaking, we are trying to find pleasure and joy and happiness in our lives. And because we have an inclination to neglect God in our life. We are trying to find 
pleasure and joy and happiness. So notice he find he was he he was trying to prove himself to see where where will I find happiness and joy. So notice he said, I said in my heart, verse one, let's or go to and I will prove thee with mirth. The Hebrew word for mirth is simcha, joy, happiness. Let's be happy. Let's enjoy life. And then he continued and he said, therefore enjoy pleasure. And behold, this is also, this also is vanity. The word for pleasure is the word for tov. I would try to enjoy pleasure here in this world. And notice he found out, behold, he says, this is also vanity. In other words, it ended up to be empty if and when I set God outside of my life. Remember that the whole thought in the book of Ecclesiastes is life under the sun, life here on earth without, you know, in, in, before we get to glory to heaven, how do we live our life here upon the face of this earth? Do we bring God into the picture, into our personal life experience? So he tried with mirth, he tried having pleasure, and he found out that, behold, it is also vanity. He gives us a summary. In verse 2, he continues, and he said, I said of laughter, uh, it is mad, and of mirth, what doeth it? What does it do for me if God is set outside of my life? So he tried mirth, pleasure, laughter, and mirth. Again, we find twice the word simcha here, and he found out that eventually, if God is not in the midst of my life, this is all in vain. It all is empty when God is not part of my life. You notice this expression, I said in my heart. You notice this expression? If you turn with me for a moment to the Gospel of Luke, in Luke chapter 12, there was a certain man that also spoke within his heart. We read of this man in Luke chapter 12 and verse 19. Actually, um, even a little bit earlier, Jesus the Messiah was sharing a parable with those that were around him. And you notice what he says in verse 16, he spake a parable unto them, saying, the ground of a certain rich man brought forth plenty. And he thought within himself, here's his ex expression, he thought within himself, he spoke to himself. And he said, what shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruit. And he said, this will I do. He was speaking within himself. I will pull down my barn, and I will build greater. And there will I bestow my fruits and my goods. And then notice in verse 19, And I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. So the Lord, Yeshua, Jesus, the Messiah, is sharing a parable, a mashal in Hebrew, and he is taking a situation in life, making an application, and he said, listen, maybe God has blessed you in so many ways. Yet you cannot neglect your relationship with God because your life might end at any moment. You must make sure that you are daily having God as part of your life. You remember at the end of the book of Ecclesiastes, he will say, remember now thy creator in the day of thy youth. Before you are getting old, before you will be too old, and time is passing by and you will not rejoice over your life because you have neglected the Lord in your life. And so there is a summary verses here in uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 2 when, where uh, Shlomo is saying, I said in my heart, 
In other words, he set God aside, although God had blessed him, gave him wisdom, gave him wealth, gave him everything. But for a season when Shlomo turned away from the Lord, and we really saw it, beloved brothers and sisters, at the end of his life, how he uh, found himself uh, in his old age, how he married many wives, had so much here in this world, and yet he neglected God, and he found out that this was ultimately turning him away from the Lord, built all sort of a, a, all sort of uh, idols uh, uh, provided uh, all sort of altars for his wives and uh, would turn away his heart from the Lord. And so he found out that everything ultimately was in vain because he set God aside. And so he giving us this summary here in uh, uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verses 1 and 2. And he noticed the, the, the two last expressions in verse 1. This also is vanity. The hevel, and then at the end of verse 2, what does it do? What does it do for me if I have, if I tried mirth, I've tried pleasure, I realize that laughter and mockery does not help me in my life, and ultimately, what does it do when God is not part in my life under the sun? And so as we move along here in verse 3 to verse 10, Kohelet, that is Shlomo, Solomon, gives us now the details. He gave the summary in verses 1 and 2. And then in verses 3 to 10, Solomon details his experiment at his search for meaning in life. He gives us the details and you notice these very interesting details. Four things he's mentioning here in verses 3 to 10. And I just want to mention as we are moving through those verses, since the fall of man in the Garden of Eden, some five, 6,000 years ago, up till today, everyone, every person that is born into this world is pursuing life, trying to find delight in his own life. Men have already received the garden of delight, Gan Eden. In Hebrew, Eden means delight. Adam had everything already that God intended to give him, but he lost it. And he lost it because of disobedience. So since that time, after God had placed Adam and Chava, Adam and Chava, outside of the Garden of Eden, in a sense, they always want to try to get in. But you remember, there was that angel there with the sword that did not allow them to come in, but they tried to find pleasure in the world. They are trying to find pleasure. We are all running, pursuing, all of us. This is the human nature trying to get fulfillment in life, trying to accomplish much in life, trying to get uh, better and, uh, and uh, higher and uh, happier and wealthier in life. That is what's happening to all mankind. That's why people are fighting in order to gain more uh, uh, um, uh, possession or land in the world. That's why there's all the conflict that exists here in this world. Man is trying to find a satisfaction for himself in life, and he finds out at the end that when God is set aside, he ends up to, le to leave this world empty. And that's why it's so important to have God in the life of all men need to turn to the Lord for salvation, but specifically us as believers. We are called to live our life with the Lord Yeshua, Jesus the Messiah, as part of our life. Because the chief end of man is to glorify God and to enjoy him forever. And we can begin here in this world. And so he continued, notice there are four things that, that Solomon is mentioning here in verses 3 to 10 of Ecclesiastes chapter 2. First of all, in verse 3, Solomon is experiment, experimented with 
alcohol, with wine. And so we read in verse 3, I thought, or I thought in my heart, once again, he's speaking within his own heart. He says, to give myself unto wine. I try wine. So he says, yet you see, I quenching uh, mine heart with wisdom and to lay hold on folly till I might see what was that good for the sons of men, which they should do under the heaven all the days of their life. So what he's saying here in verse 3, that he experiment, ex, experimented, ex, experimented with wine. He tried to enjoy life with uh, wine. Now, nothing wrong with having a glass of wine, per se, but here you notice that he test, tasted or tested a life with, in, seeking to enjoy life uh, with wine, with alcoholic beverage. Today, you notice very well that every party began with alcohol. Everything began with uh, alcoholic uh, beverage in so many circles of life. And so many groups of people trying to find enjoyment in alcohol, in alcoholic beverage. Yet we know that scripture tells us wine is a mocker, strong drink is raging, and whosoever is enticed by it is a fool. So Shlomo says, look, if I will taste wine, I enjoy wine, but I will do it kind of wisely. What I will do, I will not get overly drunk. I will enjoy wine in a proper way. I'm not going to be, uh, I will lay hold on folly till I might see what was that good for the sons of men, which they should do under the heaven all the days of their life. So he sought to find pleasure and satisfaction in wine. And you find out, he is seeking, he's just explaining this as he's uh, uh, gathered Israel around him and he's sharing with them his experiences that I what I what people ought to do under heaven all the day of their life. Uh, is there any pleasure in wine? And he find out very quickly that that does not really satisfy the end. Thank God that uh, we have liberties that God have given to us, but he found out very quickly that this itself without God in his life does not satisfy him. I just want to read a verse in uh, the book of Proverbs. If you turn with me there to Proverbs, I just want to point to this chapter 23. Proverbs chapter 23, Shlomo said that earlier in his life, in chapter 23, verse 30, notice what he says, in verse 30, he said, They that tarry long at the wine, they that uh, uh, go to seek a mixed wine, look not thou upon the wine when it is red, when it giveth his color in the cup, when it moveth itself aright, at the last it biteth like a serpent, and stingeth like an adder. In other words, be careful, Shlomo said in chapter 23, because if that's all what you are running after life, you will find out that alcohol, wine on its own, will not give you satisfaction. Again, thank God for the liberties that he gives us. And uh, when a person is enjoying a glass of wine with a meal, as it is natural in, the, in, in, in other countries, that in itself is not wrong, but be careful that it will not take you over and ultimately will cause you to be a fool. You remember that uh, first, uh, we read it in Ephesians chapter 5, be not drunk with wine, the apostle said to the believers, but be filled not with wine, but with the Holy Spirit of God. Be controlled not with wine, but be controlled by the Holy Spirit of God. So as he is giving, the, uh, giving us some details about his search for meaning in life, he began by saying, I have sought to find satisfaction. I exper ex uh, tried the experience of having wine in my life to find pleasure and enjoyment in this. 
And he found out at the end, according to verse 3, he's saying, uh, what men should seek under the heaven, under the sun? Is that what is going to satisfy him? And you will see the conclusion a little bit later on in verse 11. So I have exper experimented with wine. I really found out that this did not completely satisfy me. Then he continued in the second thing in verse uh, 4 and 5 and 6. Solomon is now uh, um, telling uh, the, the people of Israel that he sought to find himself, notice that, having various kind of uh, liberties. Notice, I made, he continued in verse 3, I made me great works. I builded me houses. I planted me vineyards. I made me gardens. Notice verses 4, 5, and 6. And orchards. I planted trees in them of all kind of fruits. I made me pools of water and water therewith uh, 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 and water wherewith the wood that bringeth forth trees. In other words, I have sought for myself, notice he is mentioning in these verses uh, houses, buildings, vineyards, gardens, orchards, pools, and all sort of water to to try to gain all these things in order to find joy and happiness and meaning in his life. Now, if you will go today, even to the land of Israel, you will still find today some of Solomon's pools and stables that exist that are still marked today, even in the land of Israel, very a, a part of a visit to the land of Israel, where you can see all what Solomon had prepared for himself. And so this list that is fine for us, uh, that he, he shared with us in this portion, verses 4, buildings, houses, vineyards, gardens, orchard, and all sort of trees, and pools filled with water, all this was part of what Solomon sought to find a satisfaction and meaning in his life. And you notice, beloved brothers and sisters, Solomon eventually could say, yes, I may have built all these things, but if I did not have God to lead me and God to be filling my heart as I'm serving here, him uh, here in this world with a purpose of life, it does not have any value. If you you can if you can just turn for a moment to the Song of Solomon, there you notice in the book of Song of Solomon, chapter eight, and verse uh, eleven. Uh, notice what we read: Song of Solomon, chapter eight, and verse eleven. We have some of the list of the things concerning the vineyards of Solomon. It says in verse 11, Solomon had a vineyard at Baal Hamon. He left out the vineyard unto keepers. Everyone for the fruit thereof was to bring a, a, a thousand pieces of silver. My vineyard, which is mine, is before me. Thou, O Solomon, must have a thousand, and those that keep the fruit thereof, two hundred. In other words, he had much vineyard, many vineyards, and Solomon gave it to keepers. The keepers uh, worked the vineyard and made for him wealth. And so Solomon was a well-to-do man, and again he's sharing, beloved brothers and sisters, his experiences that he sought to find the meaning of life, first of all, with wine, verse 3 of this third, uh, second chapter. And then secondly, he sought to find satisfaction with building for himself all sort of things here in this world. Houses, vineyards, garden, orchards, and then pools and all sort of uh, a vineyard. And ultimately, we will say... And he will say, he will tell us at the end here in verse 11, 
that when God was not part of his life, it is ultimately did not satisfy him because there was no glory for God, no purpose in, in, in giving glory to God and to enjoy God when he turned away from the Lord in his life. So, number one, he tried to be satisfied with alcoholic beverage. Number two, he tried to find satisfaction with building for himself many things here in this world, and you will find out that eventually it did not satisfy him when he turned away from the Lord. But notice the third thing here, beloved brothers and sisters. In verses 7 and 8, Solomon experimented with now, notice that, he, he sought, notice, to have a, a, to acquiring for himself a, all sort of wealth, silver, gold, treasures, men and women, singers, and all sort of instruments in his life. Notice that list here. Uh, we are here in verse, the next verses, verses 7, 8, and verses 7 and 8. We read, I got me servants and maidens, and had servants born in my house, and I had a great possession. In other words, he had people to serve him. Whether it is male servants or maiden servants, he had all those that could serve him. He had all the, you might say, like a king. Uh, he was a king, but a king that received all that which uh, uh, he can command, and servants come, and maidens come, as uh, servants that are born in his house. And also had great possessions of great and small cattle above all that were in Jerusalem before me. He continued to list here, beloved brothers and sisters, I gathered me silver and gold and peculiar treasure of kings and of uh, the provinces. I got me men singers and women singers and the delights of the sons of men as musical instruments and that of all sorts. And you notice that word delights of the sons of men. The sons of men were cast out of the garden of delight. And Solomon is showing to us here that he was seeking for this delight in his own life. And so he have accumulated for himself so much. Now remember, God have already gave him to become the richest man upon the face of this earth. He have already gave him to be the greatest king with the greatest wisdom upon the face of this earth. But when Solomon turned away from the Lord, when he set aside God outside of his life, he could never find satisfaction even in the wealth that God had given to him. So, servants and maidens and possessions, cattle, silver and gold, treasures, men singers, women singers, musical instruments, still did not satisfy him in his life. Notice it says here in verse 7, above all that were in Jerusalem. If you turn back now to 1 Kings chapter 3, 1 Kings chapter 3, you will notice that God had already given this to him when he was in a right spiritual condition in the early days of his life. When God was going to instill him to be the king of Israel. And so in 1 Kings chapter 3, we read in verse 12 and 13, Behold, I have done, God is saying to Solomon, I have done according to thy words. Lo, I have given thee a wise and understanding heart, so that there was none like thee before thee. Neither after thee shall any arise like unto thee, God is saying to Shlomo. But then notice that. He continued and he says in verse 13, And I have also given thee that which thou hast not asked both riches and honor, and that there shall not be any among the kings like unto thee all thy days. 
So Solomon, I've given you all this over and above the wisdom that you requested concerning leading the people of Israel. So Solomon actually, beloved brothers and sisters, had everything that he wanted in life, but there was a period of time in his life that he turned away from the Lord and he sought to find satisfaction in all this by setting God aside and, and find satisfaction with that which he accumulated in his own life. And he found out that really that did not satisfy him. And so he experimented with wine, he experimented with having all sort of a, a, a buildings and vineyards and gardens and orchards and pools. And then he continued to experiment with all sorts of possessions in verses 7 and 8, such as uh, uh, servants and maidens, uh, cattle and silver and gold and treasures. Setting God aside. Remember, everything that we are reading here, the lesson is to have all these possession and all these mercies here in this world, but setting God aside will never satisfy because we were created to uh, glorify God in our life and to enjoy God. And so Solomon presented the third a experiment that he did, first of all with wine, secondly with all sort of uh, gardens and vineyard, thirdly with possessions such as silver, gold, and treasures in his life, and finally, notice in verses uh, uh, 9 and 10, he continued to show, notice that he said that he took for himself everything that his eyes desired. Notice that the, the, the last verses here in our portion, verses 9 and 10, he said, and I, uh, he continues, so I was great. And I increased more than all that were before me in Jerusalem. There was no one like Solomon before him, not even his father, King David. No one in the history of Israel was like Solomon in fact, he, was, he had such a, an amazing a kingdom for 40 years uh, that Israel had shalom, peace for the kingdom, the time of Sol Solomon's reign. No one was like him until the time that God had blessed him so much. Notice what we read in verse 9. He continues and he says, Also my wisdom remained with me. The wisdom that God had given him in chapter 3, we read it in 1 Kings 3. It remained within him. He was the wisest man on earth. And whatsoever, notice this expression in verse 10, whatsoever mine eyes desire, I kept not from them. I withheld not my heart from any joy, for my heart rejoiced in all my labor. And this was my a portion of all my labor. He worked and he worked and he worked to accumulate. He worked to try to find satisfaction with these four points that he's mentioning, a wine, a vineyards, a possession, and all the desire that he had, that his eyes saw, he, whatever he desired, he satisfied himself with this. And what we learn here, beloved brothers and sisters, that eventually, when he set God aside and did not have him ruling and controlling him in his life, he was never satisfied. It's like us, isn't it? The more we try to find satisfaction with alcohol, with the pleasure of sin, with uh, all sort of things here in this world, the more we try to find pleasure, eventually as we run the course, we find out that we are really not satisfied if God is not a portion of our life. If the Lord Jesus, if the Lord Yeshua is not the one that is the object, he is the one that is satisfying the soul of the people of God. And when we set him aside, even as believers, 
The days are going by, the time it passes by, and we find out that we are not satisfied and that really we wasted our time having set the Lord Jesus out of our life. Now you might say, well, it's not possible for a Christian, for a believer to live life without God. After all, we are saved, we are believers, we are children of God. Well, turn with me to 1 John chapter 2. You see, John was writing to believers, and he's saying to the believers to whom he wrote in 1 John chapter 2, he warning the believers as Shlomo was warning the people of Israel after his experiments that he made. There's a warning for the believers. Why? Because the human nature is so sinful. The inclination to turn away from the Lord as believers is, is, is part of the danger that we all experience in our life. And so notice what John, Yohanan, is saying in 1 John chapter 2. He says in verse 15, again, he's speaking to people who are part of the family of God. And he's saying to us, he's saying to them, he's saying to all believers, he says, love not the world, neither the things which are in the world, if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. He doesn't say that if you love the world, you lose your salvation here. But what he's saying, if you really love the world and you're occupied with the world without having the Lord Yeshua, Jesus, the Messiah, as part of your life, guiding you, leading you, controlling you, filling your heart and your life, if you don't have him as the object of your life, the love of the Father is really not in you. He continued and he said, for all that is in the world, verse 16, is the three areas where Adam Vechava, Adam and Eve fell into sin. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. It is not of the Father, but it is of the world. The world passes away. And the last thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Abideth forever. So, beloved brothers and sisters, when Yohanan, John, giving these warnings to the children, to the, to the believers, to the family of God in his days of ministry, he was sharing of the importance is the, that the, as, we, as we are left here in this world, we're to enjoy what the Lord had given to us, but to have Him as part of our life, as the one that is controlling us and guiding us and, 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 and give us fulfillment and, and giving us direction in our life. Because the moment we send the Lord Jesus, the Messiah, from our life, when we set him aside, we will never be able to enjoy that which God has called us to enjoy here in this world. And it is exactly what King Kohelet, King Shlomo, is telling our forefathers, the people of Israel, in this uh, 11 uh, verses of uh, chapter 2, the first 11 verses, I have experimented, I have tried all these. I have tried alcohol, wine. I have tried vineyard and gardens. I have tried servants and maidens. I have tried possession and all this. I have tried this. I have sought to find satisfaction in all these, setting God aside. And I find out that I was not satisfied. Because the more I wanted, the more I sought for, the less I was satisfied, the less I was, uh, I, I, I was satisfied. Notice the verse in Hebrews uh, chapter uh, 13. You remember what the author who wrote to the Hebrew believers said to them in Hebrews um, uh, chapter uh, 13 and verse 5. Let your manner of life be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have, for he has said, I will never leave you 
no forsake you. What the author, the Hebrew author who wrote to the early believers, he quoted what Moshe said earlier in the book of Deuteronomy to the people of Israel before they entered into the promised land. In the book of Deuteronomy chapter 31. And John is telling us exactly what King Solomon said. I've experimented, it, I've tried that, and I fail, and I realize that I could not enjoy life having all this under the sun, under heaven, setting the God who loved me away for my life. And therefore, here's the conclusion. The conclusion is found in verse 11, beloved brothers and sisters. What is the conclusion? In verse 11, the conclusion of the experiment that uh, uh, Solomon have done, he is giving the answer uh, to the people of Israel. So then I looked at all the works that my hands had wrought. And on my hands, notice, and on, and on my, all the, the works that my hands had wrought, and on my labor, the labor that I had labored to do. I looked back and I see all that which I have worked and I have labored and I sought to find satisfaction here in this world without God, without God in my life, without Him filling my heart. And then he conclu- the conclusion was simply this. All is vanity and vexation of spirit, And there was no prophet under the sun. Here's that expression, under the sun. That expression here, no prophet, the Hebrew word is en yitaron. There is no greater gain that I have gained by pursuing all these and by setting God aside, doing it on my own without God. There is no greater gain. In fact, it became a loss for Solomon because ultimately he says, and there was no prophet under the sun. All is, not a said, he said, all is vanity and vexation of spirit. And how he began the whole book, you remember how he began verses 1 and 2 of chapter 1? The words of the preacher, the son of David, king of King in Jerusalem, he says, Vanity of vanity, says the preacher, Vanity of vanity, all is vanity. What profit hath a man of all his labor which he taketh under the sun? Tachat Hashemesh. Under the sun, living life here upon the face of this earth, setting God aside, will never be a prophet to anyone as we seeking and searching for the meaning in life. And how sad it is when at times it can happen in our life when we neglect the Lord Jesus, the Lord Yeshua, and don't have him the one that will lead us and guide us and helps us help us when we stumble when we fall when we set him aside we find like solomon that uh, notice all as it says here is vanity and vexation of spirit and there was no prophet under the sun for all what we experience during the time that we said the Lord, we said God uh, away from our life. And what a lesson, beloved brothers and sisters. This speaks to all of us. Now as believers, we need the Lord. That's why we need to spend time in prayer. We need to spend time in reading God's word. We need to spend time in fellowship with believers. We need to spend time in in being a a, a service for the Lord, sharing the gospel, ministering to God's people. We need to take the time while we continue to live our lives, to raise families, to go to work, uh, to, uh, to be occupied with the responsibilities that we have here upon the face of this earth. But we must and we need to have the Lord Jesus, the Messiah, is part 
of our life to be the one that will guide us. Before the Lord went to the cross to the tree, he said to the disciples in the upper room, you remember what he said to him? I'm the vine and you are the branches. He says, without me, you cannot do anything. In order for you to be able to do, to enjoy life and to be a blessing here in this world, you must abide. Abide in me and I in you, for without me ye can do nothing. So may the Lord help us as we have looked into the first 11 verses of Ecclesiastes uh, chapter 2, uh, verses 1 to 11, the conclusion after all what you have experienced was without God, everything is empty. It is only God that filled the heart of his people that can give satisfaction to the heart of God's people. He is the one that can, uh, the search of the soul, he can satisfy the desire of the soul. May the Lord help us uh, to be, to desire him in our life. And as we live our life here, uh, to have the Lord Jesus as the, uh, the one that fills our hearts day by day. May the Lord bless his word and encourage us today, beloved brothers and sisters. So let us close the meeting in prayer. And we will say a Shabbat Shalom to everyone. So our God and our Father, we want to thank you for the portion of scripture you have given to us. Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verses 1 to 11. Thank you for uh, King Solomon, who sought to communicate <clears throat> that without God, under the sun, life is empty. Help us to learn this lesson as we walk with you, and when we stumble and fail, restore us, we pray, Abba, our Father, for we ask it in Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen. So we say Shabbat Shalom. God bless you, everyone. Until the next time, Shalom Shalom. <laughs>